Hello everyone, welcome back, hope we're having a wonderful day and we're all doing well. So I thought it was finally time I made a video covering Nighthaven's origin and their time through the entirety of Rainbow Six Siege lore up until the current point. Now of course, if you would like to learn everything about the lore up until this point, which will help with this video as well, I have an entire lore video up on the channel. I think it's close to being one of my best performing videos ever, so I'm glad so many of you guys are enjoying it. But in that video, I sort of just introduced Nighthaven as an already existent private military company and focus on what they do in Team Rainbow and how it is relevant to the story. So I thought I should make this video to give them a bit more of a background, go a bit more into depth in Nighthaven specifically, and sort of make them the main focal point of this story rather than focusing on Rainbow. And I'm sure there's going to be some stuff in this which you have never known before, and I just think Nighthaven is really cool because Ubisoft have basically made a sort of spin-off to Rainbow. I mean, the world building they have done and what you're going to learn in this video shows that Ubisoft, if they wanted to, could potentially even make a standalone game focused on Nighthaven, which I think could be pretty cool as it does have some likes to stand on. But that is a topic for a future video, so be sure to subscribe for that, and let's get into this video. So to look at the origins of Nighthaven, we have to first start with its creator. So born in India to wealthy parents, Jaimini Kelly Mohan Shah, who goes by the alias of Kali, was destined to achieve her goals ever since a young age. She found that she had an interest in martial arts, which would eventually lead her into wanting to join the military. She would then go on to enlist, but after she found out that women were not allowed to serve in the combat units, she decided to leave. Although she had a lot of money behind her, as well well as social status, she simply wasn't allowed to go into the career path she wanted. And so, using her family's money, she would create her own private security company, which would operate inside India. As Kali wanted to expand her operations to overseas and get a greater list of clients, she would create a new company, this time a private military company, and she would give it the name Nighthaven. Now, with the creation of a brand new private military company, Kali needed some new recruits and people to help elevate Nighthaven to another level. This is where Kali would meet a woman by the name of Anya Katarina Yankovic. Now Anya, who would later go by the alias of Osa, was born into the Yankovic family who were owners of a European toy store. Because of this, Osa would travel a lot with her parents. Only when she would move in with her aunt at the age of six would she find stability. There, she would make her way through the education system, as well as learning her family's tradition of toy making. She would also develop an obsession for scientific films. All these interests would help develop her passion for creation and technology. And she would then go on to study electromechanics at a vocational school, and then military engineering at the university. University of Zagreb, and it's here where she would excel at robotics engineering. This is where she would become a bit of an outcast to her peers. Because of this, she would mainly focus on her work, giving her a unique perspective, and what is said to be a raw creative ability which set her apart from her peers. Here is where she caught the attention of Kali, who was looking for new recruits, and would soon give her an offer to join Nighthaven. This is where Osa would prove herself with her inventions and her work in the field, and would help Nighthaven stand out in front of other private military companies, and lead to more success for the company. Because of this, Kali Kali would make Osa the head of the Quantum Concepts and Robotics R&D unit at Nighthaven, and this would make Osa responsible for creating a majority of Nighthaven's cutting edge tech. Around this time as well, Kali would recruit a Kenyan man by the name of Gugi Machoki Faraha, who would later go by the alias of Wamai. Now Wamai was born to a fishing family on the coast of Kenya. Here he would spend his childhood hunting sharks and collecting lost treasures from the ocean floor of Lamu Archipelago. During his time underwater, it was clear that he could stay and hold his breath longer than many of his peers. A medical exploration revealed that he had an abnormal physiology. Because of this, Wamai had a belief that he was not from here. When the opportunity arose to use his skills for good, he done it and he joined the Kenyan Navy, and later the Kenya Special Boat Unit. He would quickly draw the attention of generals within the Navy, as well as the worldwide scientific community, for his prolific and frequent record-breaking freedives. And one of these people Wamai would draw attention to is none other than Kali, who gave him the offer to join Nighthaven, promising him more downtime in the water, and a private boat to take his him where his next dive sites may be. This is an offer that Wamai could not refuse, and he happily accepted. So, by this point, Nighthaven's doing very well. Osa is head of R&D, Wamai is now part of Nighthaven, and him and Kali are working very well together. She now routinely negotiates multi-million dollar contracts, with terms which are incredibly favourable to Nighthaven. Nighthaven became so big that even the Indian government were hiring their resources, and in the end, Kali ended up being bigger than the force which she was originally shunned away from. For better or for worse, this gave Kali the self-perception that she she can achieve what she wants regardless of the barriers. So now we're in 2019 and there is a super tanker which is being attacked by a group of mercenary pirates. These pirates threatened to kill everyone on board if they did not receive command of the ship itself. However, it seems like the pirates did not know that the crew sent out a distress signal, a signal that was answered by Nighthaven. Here Nighthaven would take out these pirates without any of the ship's crew being killed. In this operation we can see Wamai proving his usefulness to Nighthaven as well as using one of his new pieces of tech since 
destroying Night Haven known as the Magnet, a small magnetic device which pulls in items nearby, and was developed by Osa. After this successful operation, Night Haven will receive an invitation and contract from the world's most elite counter-terrorism and special forces unit, known as none other than Rainbow. Now this was decided by the director of Rainbow at the time, Dr. Harry Panday, as he believed Night Haven's successful work at saving the civilian tanker would be a valuable asset to Team Rainbow, and not long before this, Rainbow did just defeat the White Mask, seizing their bank account, and they had a lot of money to spend. And although that is what he said to Rainbow Operative Ash and Night Haven, that isn't entirely true. See, the real reason why Harry hired Night Haven was to prevent an opposing organization from hiring Night Haven and to keep a close eye on them. But the offer was accepted, the money was paid, and Callie and Wemai would join Team Rainbow as operatives. So time will go on, and Night Haven is now working with Rainbow. At some point, Night Haven will go on a joint UN operation in Somalia with Norwegian Special Forces. Here, Callie's life will be saved by a man by the name of Havard Haugland. This man would soon go by the alias of Ace. Now, Ace was born in a quiet but historic village in Norway. Because of this, he benefited early on in his life from high praise and a lack of competition. He was consistently the best at anything he set his mind to, and he easily imagined himself as an admired pediatric surgeon and enrolled in medical school. However, he soon discovered that memorizing theory wasn't to his liking and instead opted for paramedic training in order to get into the action more quickly. The Norwegian Armed Forces brought him into a new world of achievement. He completed basic training and joined the Norwegian Home Guard. Here is where he acquired a reputation for heroics. After completing his service obligation, he was accepted into the VSK Special Forces and took part in a prominent hostage rescue soon after. Because of this act of heroism and his good record, Kali invited him to join Night Haven, which he soon accepted. And as per the contract, he now also worked under Team Rainbow as a Night Haven operative. After this, Kali would continue to recruit new operatives into Night Haven, benefiting both her and Team Rainbow. Now, although Rainbow and Night Haven were working together, Night Haven were still protective of their tech. Kali ensured Osa that her inventions would not be evaluated by Rainbow, to the point where they actually had to get a lawyer in to issue a cease and desist against Mira, who was trying to evaluate some Night Haven gear. Although this would show a bit of defiance by Night Haven, both parties would continue working together, and this was just left in the past. Now, as time goes on, Kali is still keen on expanding Night Haven. This is when she travels to Bangkok to offer Aifa Tawenrung a spot in Night Haven. Aifa, who will go by the alias of Aruni, was born in Thailand and grew up along the border between Thailand and Cambodia. During her childhood, her little sister accidentally detonated an unexploded landmine whilst playing with it. This would result in her sister's death. Aruni was devastated by this and decided to help dedicate her life to helping others affected by unexploded ordinances which were left from previous conflicts. And over time, Aruni would become a private detective. With her discovery of a bomb plot in Bangkok, Aruni gained the attention of the Royal Thai Police. She had a knack for connecting the dots between seemingly unrelated incidents, and this gained her a lot of respect from the male-dominated law enforcement of Thailand. However, this would also result in a lot of hostility from numerous criminal syndicates. Regardless of this, the Royal Thai Police offered her a detective position with the Crime Suppression Division. It's here where she would dismantle a human trafficking ring and foiled no fewer than four bomb plots. Her ability to track and connect diverse shipments of explosive materials was lauded by her superiors, although she did have a tendency to bend the rules in favour of expedience, which resulted in a number of minor infractions. However, her career would come to an end and she'd almost lose her life during an operation in Bangkok, alongside a man by the name of Jordan Trace, who later in his life would become an operative for Rainbow known as Thermite. So in this operation, the pair had been tracking down a weapons racket when a bomb had been discovered on a truck. The pair decided that they needed to get this bomb out of the highly populated area, so Aruni would take control of the truck and attempt to drive it away from the area, whilst Thermite stayed in the back and attempted to defuse the bomb. However, the truck would collide with another car before the bomb was successfully defused, causing it to explode. As a result of this explosion, Aruni lost her left arm and leg, whilst Thermite, who was seemingly thrown off the truck, received much less injuries but still did get third degree burns on his hands and arms. Despite her injuries, Aruni would recover and would later return to work as a private detective once again. Fast forward to 2020, Thermite is part of Team Rainbow and Aruni receives an invitation from Kali to join Night Haven. As well as this, she is offered cutting edge prosthetics designed by Osa and Aruni decided that her pay from Night Haven should go to charity. And just like with Ace, with the agreement with Rainbow, she is now a Rainbow operative as well and her and Thermite cross their paths once again and they rekindle their friendship and neither of them blame each other for the incident that happened in the past, and both claim that they are good friends. Now around this time in Team Rainbow, they will be hosting their invitational event. 
Here, Nighthaven invite Fuse to do some training exercises with them. And this is where we learn that Callie is sort of going against a lot of Rainbow's rules, and she's showing a little bit of defiance. As well as this, Callie will be placed on Ash's team for this Invitational, and Ash is one of the biggest critics of Nighthaven, and especially has a disliking towards Callie. During the event itself, Callie uses her teammates as human bait. This results in Ash punching Callie in the face and starting to cause some strained relationships between Nighthaven and Rainbow. Because of the issues between Nighthaven and Rainbow starting to emerge, it seems like this is the point where Osa and Callie put together a plan for Nighthaven to depart Rainbow, but as well as this, take some operators with them. The first step of this plan involved Osa becoming a Rainbow operative herself. So months after this invitational event, Callie would convince Harry to recruit Osa and she would later become part of the team. The next part of this plan was to start making Rainbow Operators feel a lot more at home at Nighthaven's base. To do so, they would invite Operators such as Ella, Fuse, Smoke, Pulse, Twitch, IQ, Blitz, Zofia and Echo to visit Nighthaven's R&D facility and test out some new equipment. She would then later send a message to Osa saying that the plan is moving forward and that Osa needs to come to Greece. Now a year later from the falling out between Ash and Callie, we are at SI 2022 and Callie is her own captain. So not only is she leading the Nighthaven Operatives, Wamai, Osa, Aruni, and Ace. She also has Ella, Smoke, Pulse, IQ, and Finca on her team. However, around this time before the start of the event, Osa was actually caught by Sam Fisher, seemingly attempting to break into Rainbow's R&D department. And although Sam did have his suspicions, Osa just stated that she was reviewing the equipment, and in sort of a passive-aggressive way, told Sam not to insult Callie's leadership. That being said, the event went on as usual, and at the end of the event, Nighthaven made the announcement that they are departing from Team Rainbow, and extended the invitation to the operatives that were on Callie's team, all of which accepted now becoming Nighthaven operatives, and from this point, Callie, Osa, Wamai, Ace, Aruni, Ella, Smoke, Finca, IQ, and Pulse all left Team Rainbow, and Nighthaven no longer worked alongside them. And not long after their departure, Nighthaven would recruit a man by the name of Charlie Tho Kang Boon, who would go by the nickname Grimm. Now, when Grimm was growing up in Singapore, he could often be found in the wilderness learning and practicing the skills he was taught by his survivalist father. At 18, he was conscripted into the National Service and thrust into the NDU, Singapore's elite naval special forces formation. A prime candidate for the Frogman School, FMS, Grimm's endurance and focus assured successful completion of FMS training and advancement of the Clearance Diving Group, also known as the CDG. As part of the Naval Explosive Ordnance Disposal Unit, Grimm worked closely with countermeasure platforms. He then attended the SAF Military Intelligence Institute School of Army Reconnaissance, where where, as the eyes and ears of the SAF, he was trained to be stealthy, obtain information, and provide accurate and timely intelligence reports. This is where his skills became valuable to Nighthaven. Now, at some point around this time, Nighthaven gear will be seemingly stolen under Nighthaven's nose. We don't know what point this took place at, but it seemed to be a significant amount of weapons, and neither Rainbow nor Nighthaven knew when this took place, or how it happened. That being said, it was being sold to mercenaries all around the world, and one group of assassins used it to kill a man by the name of Masayuki Yahata, whose private bodyguard had links to a Rainbow operative, and caused Rainbow to get suspicious of Nighthaven. Several months after Rainbow and Nighthaven split, the headquarters of Nighthaven in Singapore was infiltrated and some data was stolen. Three hours after the incident occurred, Callie would gather the group of operatives in a meeting room and showed a surveillance photo of the intruder. Callie would task Grimm with interviewing each of the members of Nighthaven to learn if they knew anything about the intruder. This is when he would later learn that the person who infiltrated Nighthaven's base was was Nook, a Rainbow operative. Now, Rainbow are suspicious that Nighthaven is behind the assassination plots, and it seems like Nighthaven aren't really sure why Rainbow are on her tail, because it seems like Nighthaven doesn't know what happened, and at this time, they don't know that their gear has been stolen, and we will later learn that that was by Deimos. Callie was clearly angered by Rainbow's actions, and she told Grimm that the data stolen isn't important anymore. Rather, she tasked Grimm with finding Nook's identity, and use it as blackmail against Rainbow, to make sure that Rainbow doesn't cross them again. As well as this, she orders Grimm not to hurt any Rainbow operatives, because they don't want to make an unnecessary enemy out of Rainbow, at least not yet. Grimm is successful in his mission of tracking down Nook, and successfully blackmails her to stay out of their way. So now we're at this really awkward time between Rainbow and Nighthaven, their relationship was already quite skewed before, a lot of the operators didn't like each other before they left anyway, and now Rainbow has the suspicion that Nighthaven are assassinating people, and Nighthaven have just been infiltrated by Rainbow and they don't know why. Rainbow are infiltrating and accusing Nighthaven of assassinating people, Nighthaven are blackmailing Rainbow, to stay away from them and don't cross their path. 
But it turns out that both sides are getting played by a hidden figure, and they're both playing into their game. But not long after this, Rainbow and Nighthaven will both learn that Nighthaven gear was stolen. Because of this, Rainbow realises that it wasn't Nighthaven assassinating people, and Nighthaven now realise why Rainbow has been investigating them. It turns out that Callie is going to take matters into her own hands, and track down whoever stole the Nighthaven gear. However, Rainbow intervenes and tells Nighthaven to stay out of it, because it isn't Nighthaven's place to start a war over this, and they should leave it to Rainbow, who are going to play it by the book, and not a private military military organization. So, a Nighthaven unwittingly backs down, and Rainbow go to investigate this stolen gear. This leads them to a warehouse where a group of mercenaries are buying this stolen Nighthaven gear. The Rainbow Operatives successfully neutralize these enemies, but it turns out that this was bait and there was explosives rigged in the building. The bombs explode and injure our operators, leaving Ash, one of the biggest critics of Kali, in a coma. This is where we get the introduction of the new villain Deimos, the director of Team Rainbow is killed by him, and it turns out he has been pulling the strings since the start, and has been purposely using stolen Nighthaven gear to assassinate people, he created fake turmoil between both sides to get the upper hand. Nighthaven learned what happened to Rainbow, however it seems like they're going to stay out of it, and they're going to let Rainbow do their job, however one of the latest pieces of information that we do know is although Ash and Callie really didn't like each other, especially when they work together, Callie does want Ash to pull through and say that they have unfinished business. And finally, here are some psych notes from Callie about all of the operators in Nighthaven, and it really gives you a good deep dive into how she perceives them, and the reasons why the ex-Rainbow operatives actually joined Nighthaven. Nighthaven Psych Note, Zero One Recording, Ella. Borsak's integration depends on making sure she doesn't regret cutting ties with her sister and Rainbow at large. She wanted action and freedom without the baggage of familial trauma. Nighthaven will give her that. We need her to know that she can count on our loyalty. Her closeness with Osa should work to that effect, but we cannot rely on this alone. I'll set up a training session. Just Ella and I. Nighthaven Psych Note, Zero Two Recording. Finka. Promises were made when I reached out to Melnikova for recruitment. She has been focused and proactive in developing a new division of Nighthaven. The opportunity to push ZBRN defense research to a new frontier was not lost on her. Finka and Smoke are like oil and water on a personal front, but they are working wonders in the lab, as Osa assured me they would. I enlisted IQ and Aruni to help with Melnikova's personal research. Nighthaven Psych Notes, 03 Recording, IQ. It was noted that as an introvert, Vice needed a particular environment to thrive and be comfortable. Her interest in Osa's methods in our laboratory spoke volumes and I leveraged that. IQ had purposely avoided the private sector in the past, explicitly stating she felt it was limiting at the time. I want to know more about that. Her perspective could be the key to our expansion. Nighthaven Psych Notes, 04 Recording. Pulse. Estrada was a gamble. He was in a sorry state when we met, and I had no way of knowing how to snap him out of it. What I could offer was a fresh start, a chance to question himself and his motivations. It's paid off. This transcript states that Pulse credits his recent performance spike to A, breaking up with Hibana, and B, affirming his bisexuality. I don't doubt him, but I expect our reports to be more in depth than that. I'll have to order a new one. Nighthaven Psych Notes, 05 Recording, Smoke. Porter is a difficult man to pin down. Change seems to be his defining trait, and he always seeks to push boundaries. In hindsight, I'm surprised he didn't join us sooner. Smoke is very private about his daughter. The details of her current status and location will remain confidential, but he'll be pleased to know she can be extracted at a moment's notice. Nighthaven Psych Notes, 06 Recording, Callie. To address comments and questions in your report as shortly as I can, the way outsiders perceive me is of no consequence. I live on my own terms and my agents can relate to that. 
I remove obstacles, as any good leader should. It is neither empathy nor manipulation. It is practical. A distracted agent cannot be expected to reach their potential. Nighthaven, Psych Notes, 07 Recording. Osa. It doesn't take a genius to understand that the cold front Anya puts on is simply her way of preventing people from looking too closely. She is driven, passionate, and a reliable friend. The fools at her university try to diminish her, but Osa will always be motivated by wonder. She is the future. Their loss, my gain. Nighthaven Psych Notes, 08 Recording. Wamai, Furaha is one of the most self-aware people I know. His contemplative nature is an edge that cannot be bought. His independence is an attractive example to others. Wamai also excels at making people comfortable by finding activities suited to them and simply doing that with them. A trait that's been useful of late as we navigate divisive times. Wamai's presence keeps us united. Nighthaven, Psych Notes. 09 recording. Ace. The constant antics Ace performs in seeking attention can be irritating, but he knows how to make himself valued. Ego is his motivator, and it would be unwise to destroy it without finding a substitute. His developing friendship with Pulse is a curious thing. I had never previously seen Ace do anything that wasn't self-serving in some way. Nighthaven Psych Notes, 1-0 recording. Aruni. Aruni is often asked why she stays with Nighthaven, as if there were somewhere else that she would rather be. People forget the obstacles she faced even before the Bangkok operation. What measure of loyalty she has with this unit isn't important compared to the value she places on being able to operate unhindered. My contributions to her philanthropic efforts are a convenient reminder that Nighthaven is the best home for her skills. Nighthaven Psych Notes, 1 1 Recording, Grimm. Many struggle to understand how someone like Grimm could integrate with a unit without causing any conflict. He brings structure and erases doubt, and that can be worth more than a kind word. He may not connect with others on an emotional level, but he does respect their boundaries. His reasons are his own, and he makes sure they don't get in the way. Galley's Log, Mission Report T9C. The asset was retrieved quietly, as requested. No casualties although Pulse will be out of commission for a day or two. We should hear from the client within a week about next steps. Kali's Log, Mission Report 22L. I led this mission myself to make sure our new recruits see and recognize that Nighthaven leadership isn't afraid to get its hands dirty. I wasn't needed, given how well Osa and IQ work together, but it still felt good to be back in action. Kali's Log, Mission Report 3CM. The extraction went off without a hitch. Grimm and Wamai are infallible assets when dealing with piracy. Following the mission, Osa expressed interest in aquatic training. Kali's Log, Mission Report ABX. The new recruits perform well in the initial field test despite some unexpected variables. Personal note. Follow up with Ace to remind him there's no time for... Callie's log, mission report, DK-4. We had to pull out to avoid a major incident. Our contact won't be happy with the delay, but I'm putting together a plan to go back and complete the objective. They will have to be patient. And so, that is the story of Nighthaven up until Operation Dread Factor in Rainbow Six Siege. I tried to really give this from their perspective of the story, so I did leave out a lot of information of what Rainbow knew and what happened in the background. If you want to see all of that, I have an entire lore video which will show that, but I really want to give this from the perspective of Nighthaven, so a lot of the information they didn't know wasn't shown, so it helps to show why they were confused, why they made some decisions, and just help you understand Nighthaven's entire mindset going through this, especially with the emergence of Deimos. So will Nighthaven and Rainbow work together? 
together again in the future? Honestly, who knows? I really think they probably will, but not anytime soon. And as well as this, I think it would be really cool if we maybe get like a Nighthaven standalone game. I think that could be something very interesting and it would work very well. So be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope this video did help you further understand Nighthaven, a lot of their backstory, and a lot of their motives going through Rainbow Six lore. Drop a like on this video if you did enjoy, dislike it if you did not, subscribe if you are new, and stay tuned for more. I love you all, stay safe, have a great day, peace.